All right, Shalom, Yasha'Allah. Um, before I begin this lesson, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Um, I'm just going to try to make this quite brief and to the point, you know, because um, Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai has put the spirit on me to um, speak on this lesson, this uh, video that was sent to me by the brother uh, Matazatbaf. Um, <clears throat> he's a, you know, a solo brother down there in Australia who is um, a part of Great Millstone. And, uh, you know, he, his, his lessons are very edifying. The brother's very knowledgeable. So, you know, if, if, you, uh, if you don't know who he is, go check him out. Um, a very diligent brother, you know. And um, <clears throat> he sent me this video here of this woman, and she is catching pure hell. And, you know, back in the days, I'd have been in the spirit of feeling sorry for this woman, you know, because when you're, you know, when you're high on that Jesus juice, you know, when you're all um, doped up off of Christianity, which is a hell of a drug, you know, then it will keep you in the wrong spirit. It will make you feeling sorry for the wrong people, man, you know. And you and and it will keep you from understanding the Lord's judgments, you know, because this woman is is being judged right now, you know, and this is what uh most people packed up in the Christian church don't understand, you know. It's a joyful thing to see her catching hell like this because she she's oozing with pride. Anyway, I ain't gonna speak much more on it. I'm just gonna play the video, and then I'm gonna pause it as we go along, and I'm gonna bring out a few precepts because. When I watched this, so many precepts came to mind, and I just, I thought I gotta do a lesson on it, man, you know? Uh, the brother, uh, Mata Zatbaf, he sent this uh, precept along with this video when he sent it to me, and it says Isaiah 33 and 6, verse uh, uh, through 6, oh yeah, Isaiah 36, 36. 33 and verse 6, like here. Uh, it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, right? So when you have this wisdom and knowledge, that, you know, the true wisdom and knowledge of the Holy Scriptures, it's going to keep us stable in these times. Because, and the reason he sent this precept is because obviously this woman has no stability. She's losing her mind, you know, because she doesn't possess the true wisdom and knowledge. You know, the scriptures also state that our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But let me go ahead and continue. Um, it says, and strength of salvation. So, you know, the, the wisdom and knowledge of the times and in the, these times that we're living in is also the strength of our salvation. That's what's going to um, have a strong effect on whether or not we receive salvation, you know. So it says, and the fear of Yahweh is his treasure. Those that, you know, have the wisdom and knowledge, you know, the fear of the Lord is our treasure, you know. That's, that's our secret, you know. That's our, that's our gift, you know. It's, it's basically having that fear of the Lord, you know. And we have the fear of the Lord because, you know, we seek out the wisdom of the ancients, man. But anyway, I'm blabbing on. Let me just play the clip. And Lord willing, you edified through this lesson. Somebody please explain to me what kind of loving God allows this type of pain to go on for so long. Everybody screams, oh, God is so good. God is so loving. But what kind of God allows some type of pain like this to go on for so fucking long? Like, I don't get it. Yes, I know I get up here and I talk about God a lot. But right now, I don't have any faith anymore. I really don't. My faith is fucking gone. Honestly, I don't feel like a Jesus came to die for our sins because it's other sins that causes people to act the way that they act. Just imagine if what would happen. Hold on. She said <clears throat> a few seconds ago she was talking about how she's lost faith in the Most High. I just want to quickly pull up a few precepts on that. And uh, one, bear with me one second here. All right, so we're going to go to second Ezra's and then we're going to go to chapter five, verse one. It says, nevertheless, as come in the tokens, behold, the day shall come that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number. And we're living in that time. 
A lot of people are getting ready to start dropping dead from being poisoned. And a lot of people are getting ready to die in this third world war, as well as civil war. You know, when Jacob's trouble hits, that's when bodies are going to start hitting the floor. It's going to be from famine also. OK, because, you know, all hell is going to break loose in the society when the system collapses. You know, when the dollar crashes, which is almost here. You know, and a lot of people are going to drop dead. So this is a future prophecy, but this is something that's starting to happen right now as we speak, as I speak. OK, so I'm going to read on. It says that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in a great number. That means killed in a great number. And it says, and the way of truth shall be hidden. So that ain't happened yet, but it's coming. During Jacob's trouble, you ain't going to be able to get the way of truth. And anybody outside that ark is screwed. OK. So get it while you can, basically. You know, you got to seek him early, the scriptures say. Seek the Lord early. And it says, and the land shall be barren of faith. And I wanted to bring this out because, you know, we haven't even reached Jacob's trouble yet. Or the peak of Jacob's trouble, should I say. You know, we're on the edge of Jacob's trouble right now, but it hasn't really hit like it's going to, you know. But during that time, it says the land shall be barren of faith, you know. And barren means devoid of you know, or empty, you know, lacking, you know, it's going to be no faith out here during Jacob's trouble. But the reason I wanted to bring this out is because, you know, Jacob's trouble hasn't hit yet. And this woman's already catching hell and losing faith in the most high. And this is the, the mindset of a lot of these Christians right now, these so-called Christians, they're losing faith. They're leaving the Christian church in droves and fleeing from Christianity because they're realizing that it's powerless, you know, and you still got some people that are ignorant and stubborn and want to cleave to Christianity because, you know, they're institutionalized. It's all they know and they have a hard time letting go. You know, and the scriptures say, you know, if you don't come to the Lord as that little child that he sat before the disciples, you know, I, I forget the exact preset, but there was a there was a preset where you have a shy who the world calls Jesus. OK, which ain't his true name. His name is Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai set a child among, uh, among him and the disciples. And he said, verily I say unto you, and this is roughly paraphrasing. He says, verily I say unto you, unless you come to me as this little child, you shall by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, and basically what that means is that if you don't come and be teachable like a child, you know, children, they soak up everything. They listen, they learn. You know, when an elder tells them something, they're glued and they're listening, you know, and they're learning. They're not quick to say no, but I think this and that and giving their opinion and all that, like the nigger woman likes to do, you know, shaking her head, twisting her neck, clicking her fingers and all that crap. You know what I mean? Don't want to listen, just straight up stubborn and unteachable, you know. So unless you come to the Lord as a little child that is teachable, then you're useless to the most high because you're too far gone. You're institutionalized. You know, and that's what Christianity will do to people. You got to think outside the box and realize what Christianity has done to your head. You know, it's a it's been a big lie. It's been a big deception, you know, and this woman is stuck in Christianity. You know, I watched a few of her other videos just to see what her character was about. And yeah, she a nigger woman for real, man. Anyway, let me crack on with this, this video, Salakia. In fact, let me run it back a little bit. Screams, oh God is so good, God is so loving. But what kind of God allows some type of pain like this to go on for so fucking long? Like, I don't get it. Because she never knew the God of Israel. She knew, all she knew was God and Jesus. And those are false gods, you know? So, let me just pull up another quick precept. And Salakia for babbling on, I know you want to watch the rest of the video, but it's very vital that I bring this out. You know, we're going to get to it. Don't worry. I'm going to show you what the rest of it's about because it, it is worth sticking around. This woman's catching hell, you know, and I feel no sort of remorse for this woman, man. Back in the day, I might have when I didn't know any better. But now that I under, understand the truth, I understand that she deserves everything that's coming her way. And this is a part of her judgment, you know. That now I understand things better, so it, it allows me to be more at peace and stable, you know? And we got to be stable in these times we're coming into because everyone around us is going to be catching way worse hell than her. So if you ain't got a stable mind, which our stability comes from the knowledge and wisdom of these scriptures, then you're going to be screwed out here. You're going to be losing your damn mind. 
just watching everybody else lose their mind, you know? Um, one second. All right, this is the book of Judges, chapter 10 and verse 14. It says, go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. It says, let them deliver you in your time of tribulation, you know? And this that's why this woman isn't, she isn't feeling the results of her prayers. I guarantee she's praying wrong too. She's probably praying with her head uncovered, you know, which is going off. You know what I mean? The Lord, the, the Bible explains how a woman is supposed to pray, but you'll find that in the Christian church, no, barely any women out there praying with their head covered, man, because they're not taught the right way. They just think they can do what they want and just call on Jesus and they're good. They think they're saved already, you know? They have no understanding. Our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, man. You know, and this woman doesn't have the correct knowledge. Therefore, she's in a destroyed state right now. All right. So the Lord says to cry unto the gods you have chosen, because contrary to popular belief, you've got to have his correct name, man. Otherwise, you're calling on a false God. If you're calling on Jesus, you can forget it. There's no power in the name Jesus. And I don't know how many times we've got to tell people this, but they just don't seem to get it. Or they don't think that we're telling the truth. They think that we're false prophets. They did, Rather than looking into what we're saying, they just scoff, you know? So, you know, when judgment comes their way, hey, they ain't innocent, man. You know, the Lord says no man perishes being innocent in the book of Job. All right? Let me get back to this clip. Yes, I know I get up here and I talk about God a lot. But right now, I don't have any faith anymore. I really don't. My faith is fucking gone. Honestly, I don't feel like a Jesus came to die for our sins because it's other sins that causes people to act the way that they act. Just imagine if what would happen if we were all born healthy and whole. If you're healthy and whole, why the hell you need to go out in here and cause pain to somebody else? I feel like we bear our own crosses and we use our own strength and pull ourselves up out of it. That's honestly how I feel. And all of this is for what? To fulfill a purpose that we didn't ask for? We didn't ask for this life. I swear I wish I could sue my motherfucking parents. Because why would people bring children or anybody into this motherfucking life? Why would anybody do that? Why? I wanted to have another baby, but fuck that. I'm mad that I brought my own children into this bullshit. I hate this fucking life. Alright, I'm going to stop it right there because I just want to say that she's in the right spirit there. You know, you're not supposed to love your life. This is hell. This is not our rest. So she's right to be mourning uh, because of the, the, the oppression, you know. Surely oppression make of a wise man mad, you know. And she's in the right spirit for being angry with this life, you know, because this ain't our rest, you know. It, the Lord says in Micah 2 and 10 that this is not our rest. It says, rise ye and depart. Obviously, we can't just leave the world, but we got to depart from here spiritually. You know, we got to let go of the things that we've been taught, you know, uh, like Christmas, Halloween and all that. Eating certain foods that we're not supposed to. You know, uh, listening to the philosophies that they push on us. you got to think to yourself, why the hell would Esau, the devil, or why the, uh, would the government basically say th that, well, allow Christian churches to be pushed on a high level if the truth was there? <laughs> it makes no sense. You know, you got all these mega churches making millions of dollars. Why would they allow that if it was the truth? Why would that? Because Esau controls the world. The Bible says in Job nine twenty four that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So if the wicked are in rulership of this world, why would they allow mega churches? If you're getting the truth there, you know, the truth ain't in these churches, you know. And the Lord don't feel sorry for her because she's catching judgment. Let me just pull up a quick precept. All right, this is the book of Isaiah chapter nine verse sixteen through seventeen. It says. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, okay? Short for error or going off, you know, or be led in the wrong way. It says, for the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. So that goes into your pastors being the leaders. The pastors of these Christian church cause our people to err, or cause them to not know the right way. And it says, and they that are led of them, meaning these Christians, 
okay? Not just Christians, Muslims, you know, uh, you people that practice Islam and all that, you know, you, you ain't got the truth, so there's no power in that. It says, and they that are led of them are destroyed. The Lord is allowing you to be destroyed because you're calling on false gods. That's the end of the story, man. All right, verse 17 says, therefore, the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless widows, okay, that's this woman here, this catch in hell, this nigger woman, all right, and it says, for everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer, see, hypocrites and evildoers, man, all these people packed up in this Christian church, this describes them to a T, and it says, in every mouth speak of folly, you know, they all talk a bunch of crap, bunch of gibberish, bunch of, you know what I mean, like, Acting like they're talking in tongues and all that crap When they don't even know what the hell they're saying Just a whole bunch of folly man And it says For all this his anger is not turned away But his hand is stretched out still Because we're under the curses man So as long as you continue into Packing these Christian churches And be lied to And act like a bunch of hypocrites Putting on your Sunday smile Every time you go to, go to church And then acting like a damn demon the rest of the week, you know what I mean, hypocritical man, because you're still doing that, it says, for all this, his anger is not turned away, we're still catching hell, it says, but his hand is stretched out still, okay, his hand is stretched out upon us, you know, his, meaning that, you know, he's, he's, he's putting judgment upon us, basically, okay, like powerful people, people with money, other people money don't move me, I'm not moved by money, because that's all this world is about, they don't give a fuck about nobody's pain, they don't give a fuck about nobody, they just don't give a fuck, and I'm tired of giving a fuck, I'm tired of trying to walk this supernatural path and be this good upright citizen, fuck that shit, I'm tired of that shit, I don't want to give a, not give a fuck like everybody else. Because this shit is painful. What we have to go through just to live a fucking life is just too much. It See, she she means well, right? Like, she she's saying, like, basically, you know, why the good ones have to suffer? I might as well not give a fuck like the rest of these people that don't believe in the Lord, right? Is what she's basically saying. But, you know, she's not innocent, man. You know, she's in the right spirit for you know, complaining about this life, but she's being lied to and she's being destroyed. The Lord is leaving her to it, man, leaving her to her own devices, okay? And this is what she don't understand. Unless she calls on the true God and repents, she's screwed out here, man. It's only going to get worse from here on. You understand, you know? And it's a beautiful thing to see because, you know, these people have had the chance to, you know, to call upon the true God and they've rejected it. You know, everybody's heard about the Hebrew Israelites. I guarantee she's scoffed and talked some kind of crap, man. Guarantee it, you know. But anyway, i got a quick preset I want to pull up. All right, this is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15, verse 8. It says, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Okay, so the Lord is is done playing around. You you people about to catch hell, okay? Especially in these end times, man. It says, Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me. And this is the point I want to highlight. It says, And the souls of the just complain, complain continually. So she's not a just woman, okay? But she is in the right spirit for complaining continually about this world, man. You know, because this is hell. You know, especially in America, man, the curses are two times or ten times, should I say, stronger than they are in a lot of other places in this world. Trust me, I've lived there. I used to live in America for 14 years. That place is hell. It is truly the valley of the shadow of death. It's too much. I could die today and wouldn't give a fuck because guess what? I won't be here for this bullshit. I won't be here for this bullshit. I will. You know, and she's right, you know, when you die, you are at rest, you know, she's right about that. When you die, you're at rest, you know, she she probably thinks you go to heaven or hell because that's what they're taught in Christianity, which is going off, you know, as the scriptures say, the leaders of this people cause them to err, you know, they err not knowing the truth. 
Alright? Don't be here for this bullshit. Everybody mourning over people that's dead. No, they in a better place. Keep fighting to be here in this raggedy ass fucking earth. Fuck this goddamn life. And you know what? I'm not changing shit about me until I get my goddamn kids back. Damn. <laughs> Boy, you can see this woman got a legion of demons on her, man. <laughs> you can just tell. You know? I know. Oh, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a few precepts on that in a few minutes. I'm always be this way. All that comedy funny shit, y'all can flush that shit down the toilet. Kiss my ass. I've been up here three years laughing, hee hee, ha ha, hoping this shit would get fucking better. And it don't. <laughs> Yo, didn't the Lord say that the mirth was going to be gone? You know, the Lord said you're going to take the mirth out this earth. Let me see if I can quickly find that one. All right. All right. Here, I think I found it. Right, so it says, The new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh. Okay, everybody that was merry-hearted, merry you know, they were living their best life, hot girls, some, all that crap. You know what I mean? They sighing right now, you know? It says, The mirth of Tabret ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the joy of the harp ceaseth, it says, they shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. And this is the times we're living in, man. Okay. It says, the city of confusion is broken down. And the city of confusion is Babylon the Great, man. America. Okay. So, you know, this place is through. You know, America's through. Okay. It says, uh, the city of confusion, a.k.a. Babylon, because Babel means to be, uh, means confusion. So Babylon means confusion, okay? It says, the city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. It says there is a crying for wine in the streets, okay? Meaning uh, there's a qu uh, crying for truth, basically, you know? For, for answers, for, you know, the people want to know what's going on, man. It says all joy is darkened. It says the mirth of the land is gone, Okay? This, and this, you know, this hasn't even hit full steam yet, but this is the time we're coming into, you know, and you can see the start of it through this video that I'm showing you, man. You know, it's a perfect example of what this scripture is talking about. It's all coming true. Okay. man. It says there is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. And that's this woman right here. Look at that. Boy, she looks through, man. One second. Uh. Fuck life and fuck that God. Don't get up here and talk about some. Oh, give it to God. Kiss my ass. I had to come out. Damn, she said F. She said F the most high, man. You know, who she believes to be the most high. All right. So don't tell me that I should be feeling sorry for this woman, man. You know, she's perishing right now. And what does the scripture say? Let's just bring it out real quick, man. All right, this is the book of Job, chapter 4, verse 7. It says, Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? You know? And the point is, whoever perished being innocent. This woman ain't innocent. She's catching hell right now. And the reason she's catching hell is because the Lord is putting it on her. You know? This is Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, Yahweh, do all these things. See, the Lord is the one that's in control of whether a person is catching hell or whether they're having peace. The Lord is in control. The, the Lord is the one that formed the light and created darkness. Okay? All these things that she's going through right now is of the Lord. Okay? Just so you know. Yeah, breathe, bro. Seriously. I've been suffering like way longer than Jesus have. They say he died at 33. I'm 37 still fucking suffering. Dang. Somebody please explain Dang. to me what Absolutely, kind of man. loving God Absolutely allows this through. type of pain. Absolutely through. Right. Let's just quickly look at a few comments because there is one or two I want to uh, I want to pull out for you that I saw. Uh, where is it? 
Here we go. This one caught my attention. It says, I am literally in tears because I've been having the same conversation with myself for years. It's like everything you believed is a lie. You see, there's no power in Christianity, man. You know, she had 88 people like that. And that was only it. That comment was left an hour ago, man. So a lot of people agree. I don't know what the hell. Jesus loves you unconditionally. Look, see, people leave stuff like that. They ain't trying to hear that crap. People want answers. People want proof that the Lord is real, man. You know, you ain't getting that kind of proof in the Christian church. You know, all you're being doing, all you're doing is being taught lies. You're being taught the same sermon, John three sixteen, every damn week in the Christian church. You know what I mean? Absolutely through. These Christians are through. They real. They're starting to realize there's no power in the in the Christian church. These people are losing their faith. Sometimes we get like this, and it's okay. Just try to find faith again. No girl, he is here with you. Look at that. She ain't trying to hear none of that. All these people with these pointless comments just saying, keep keep trying, keep praying to Jesus. It's going to be better. It ain't going to get better, okay? The Lord is cat putting hell on this woman because she's a damn demon, man. All right? And I know a lot of you might be thinking, oh, don't judge. I've got some precepts for you in a few minutes. How ironic, but you up here pretending to know me. How ironic, but you up here pretending to know me. So he says, this this commenter, Cynthia Smith. Okay, so this woman, Cynthia Smith, says, you never knew God, and you don't know him now. His name ain't God, by the way. Okay, but what she's basically saying is, you never knew the Most High, which is true. She's right. You never. She never knew the Most High. She thought she did, but she didn't because you was taught lies in Christianity. You know, the Lord didn't dwell in temples made with hands. But how you ironic the, you see the attitude, man, the pride, her rolling her eyes and all that crap. You know what I mean? She's the type of woman can't be told nothing. But you up here pretending to know me. How see, and you know what I mean? And people will say like she's saying, uh, basically, don't judge me. How dare you judge me? Which is what a lot of people say, right? I got some precepts for that, man. All right, this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter eight, verse fifty. It says, "For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world," meaning in the later time, in the end times. Okay, many great miseries are going to be done to uh, a lot of people in these end times. Okay, it says because they have walked in great pride. And you can see this woman is oozing with pride. How ironic, but you up here pretending to know me. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, she just oozing with pride. So, you know, this is why the great miseries are coming upon her, because she's been walking in great pride, man. All right, this is the book of Sirach, of words known as Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 10 and verse 7. It says... Pride is hateful before the most high end man, and by both doth one commit iniquity, okay? So, you know, pride is disgusting, okay, but by men and by the most high. You know, when you can tell a person is oozing with pride, it's just horrible to see. It just, you know, it's not right. It just, it's really cringy, you know, and the Lord hates it too. The Lord says he resists the proud, Okay. And this woman looks like the type you can't tell her nothing, you know. So it's a joyful thing to see her catching hell. All right. You know, and I got a few more precepts for when they say don't judge, you know. Let's just turn to the book of Leviticus real quick. All right. Here we go. Leviticus 19 and 15 says, ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Does it say ye shall not judge? No, it says ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. You know, we have to judge righteously. It says thou shalt not respect the persons of the poor. Okay, so don't be, you know, when you're judging somebody, you don't, you don't say, oh, but he's poor, so I'm going to let it slide. No, 
you, you have to be honest when it comes to judgment, whether they're poor or rich. It says, nor honor the persons of the mighty. Okay, so if a person's mighty in this world, they're, they're of a high stature or whatever, you're not supposed to show favoritism toward them either. Okay, like these Edomites do in the courts, man. You know, quick to throw the books at Jake, you know, the poor, the Israelites. But f the, the, the white man that has money, the so-called white man that has money, he'll get off on the same charge, man. He'll get a lot less of a sentence, man, because these people, these Edomites, they're not just. They don't know how to judge righteously. Okay. It says, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Okay. It doesn't say, don't judge your neighbor. No, it says in righteousness, judge your neighbor. Okay. Now, a lot of you might be saying, well, how do you know she's she's proud you you're judging her for being proud saying she has pride how do you know she has pride all right let's go to that one too man cuz i got another quick preset all right this is the book of uh sirach chapter 19 verse 29 it says a man may be known by his look and one that have understanding by his countenance when thou meetest him okay so you will be able to tell what kind of a person they are by their countenance when you meet them or by their look. It says a man may be known by his look. You can just look and tell that this woman is oozing with pride, you know. And to be honest, I watched a few uh, videos of hers before I started this lesson just to, you know, get a better judge of her character before I went and passed that judgment. And, you know, it's righteous judgment. It's... It's evident, it's written all over her that this woman is oozing with pride, okay? And she strikes me, now I could be wrong, but she strikes me as a type that is unteachable. You try to teach her something and she thinks she knows it all, you know? So I wouldn't even bother engaging with her on, that, on her post because she probably just going to reject it. I've seen it many times before. All right, I just want to bring these few precepts out because... I actually thought of these scriptures when I was watching this video and uh, I'm sure you can understand why I want to bring these out after I'm done reading them. This is Proverbs 1, I'm going to start at 20. It says, Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. And that's talking about the prophets that the Lord has sent in these end times. They're not in the church houses. They're, they're, they're teaching the wisdom of the scriptures in the streets now, Okay. You can go see them in, in a lot of major cities in this world. You know, the Lord has sent the prophets or everywhere for the people to have a fair shot at hearing the gospel so that the Lord is justified when he destroys them, the ones that don't accept the truth. OK, so the wisdom is crying in the streets. It says she crieth in the chief place of concourse, meaning you're busy, you know, shopping centers and cities and stuff. You're busy cities. It says in the opening of the gates. You know, like when you come into the city through the, uh, by the bus station or by the train station, that's the opening of the gates. It says in the city, she uttereth her words saying, how long ye simple ones will ye love simplicity? Okay, because our people are very simple, you know, and they love simplicity. So the Lord through the men of the, the Lord, yeah, the most high through the men of the Lord is saying to the people, how long will you remain being simple? You know? Loving folly and entertainment and stuff when we're living in very serious times. And it says, and the scorners delight in their scorning. You know, these scoffers, man. And the fools hate knowledge, you know. It says, how long, man? It says, turn you at my reproof. Okay, the reproof is coming through the men of the Lord. It says, turn you at my reproof. Okay, and if you do, it says, behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make my words known unto you. That's if you turn at his reproof, you know, he'll make his words known unto you. That way you won't be catching hell. You'll have the wisdom that you need to get through these end times. It says, because I have called and ye refused. This is going out to the ones that rejected the truth. It says, because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded OK, it says, but ye have set at naught all my counsel, you know, you, you, you said it as a thing that was worthless, basically, all the Lord's counsel. It says, and would none of my reproof, meaning you would have none of his reproof. OK, it says, I will also 
I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. So the Lord is laughing at this woman right now. That's why her prayers ain't heard, man. Because she's praying to the wrong God for one, okay? And she hasn't humbled herself. She hasn't renewed herself, man, okay? She's still stuck in that nigger woman mindset, okay? It says, I will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. It says, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind and this is the point right here when distress and anguish cometh upon you and this woman was full of distress and anguish you could see it in her man she was very passionate you, sh you see how many likes and comments she got and she's only she only just put this post up it's going viral okay because it's full of passion she really meant that stuff man it says then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. See, your prayers are going on deaf ears, man. The Lord is not hearing you. That's why you have no faith. You know, it says they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. It says for they hated knowledge, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of Yahweh. Okay, they chose the fear of God or Jesus. You know what I mean? giving credit to false gods and it does matter the name does matter it's very important his name is holy you can't call upon any name thinking that the lord knows my heart the lord knows who i'm talking about no it doesn't work that way the name is powerful there's many many scriptures that state that the then how important the name is acts 4 and 12 upon many other precepts man all right so it says, they would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. And that's that woman to a T, man. She's eating of the fruit of her way. She, and, 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 it's, and it's tasting quite bitter, okay? It says, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth, Meaning, whoso listens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Okay? So, you know, this woman, she's catching hell because she didn't hearken unto the... Your Lord. shadow ban your... All right? She didn't hearken unto the true God of Israel. But let me just quickly uh, pull out one more preset before I close this lesson out. Because I do want to mention that, you know, this woman is catching hell... Because she deserves it, you know, and it's a joyful thing for us to see the fall of our enemies, you know. All right, this, so this is Sirach 25 and verse 7. It says, there be nine things which I have judged in mine heart to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. You see? So, basically, you know, it's, it's basically the scriptures are saying that, it's a very happy thing. It's a very joyful thing. Just as joyful as watching your children grow and prosper and be happy and healthy. You know how much, how joyful that is to see. It says it's just as joyful, basically, to, to live and see the fall of your enemy. And why do I say that she's my enemy? It's because the scriptures say that she's my enemy. Let me just pull that one out real quick. All right, there's a book of Psalms, chapter 139. I'm going to start at verse 24. I mean, 21, Salakia. It says, do not I hate them, O Yahweh, that hate thee. Okay, so it's okay to hate them that hate the Lord. Okay, it says, and am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? Meaning the truth. You rising up against the truth. When the Lord rebukes you and corrects you and you say, no, not my Jesus. I'm going to do things my way. That's not what the Bible says. No, you're taking things out of context. You know, all that crap that they say. Hey, man, we hate people like that. OK, it says, do not I hate them. Oh, yeah. How would that hate thee? You either love the most high or you hate the most high. You either love the truth or you hate the truth. There's no in betweens. OK. So you better hope that you're on the right side of the most high and that you do truly love the truth, okay? It's vital. It says in verse 22, I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies, okay? And this woman is our enemy, okay? So seeing her fall like that is a joyful thing according to the scriptures, okay? And that's when you know you're in the right spirit, 
Okay, so all you Christians out there feeling sorry for this woman, you don't understand the Bible. You don't understand the ways of the truth. And it may come across as hateful, but we understand the Bible. Okay, us people that the Lord has raised up in these end times, we understand how the truth of the Bible. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to play this clip one more time for you. And uh, I'm going to close it out there. <clears throat> Somebody please explain to me what kind of loving God allows this type of pain to go on for so long. Everybody screams, oh God is so good, God is so loving. But what kind of God allows some type of pain like this to go on for so fucking long? Like, I don't get it. Yes, I know I get up here and I talk about God a lot. But right now, I don't have any faith anymore. I really don't. My faith is fucking gone. Honestly, I don't feel like a Jesus came to die for our sins because it's other sins that causes people to act the way that they act. Just imagine if what would happen if we were all born healthy and whole. If you're healthy and whole, why the hell you need to go out in here and cause pain to somebody else? I feel like we bear our own crosses and we use our own strength and pull ourselves up out of it. That's honestly how I feel. And all of this is for what? To fulfill a purpose that we didn't ask for? We didn't ask for this life. I swear I wish I could sue my motherfucking parents. Because why would people bring children or anybody into this motherfucking life? Why would anybody do that? Why? I wanted to have another baby, but fuck that. I'm mad that I brought my own children into this bullshit. I hate this fucking life. I don't like powerful people, people with money. Other people, money don't move me. I'm not moved by money because that's all this world is about. They don't give a fuck about nobody's pain. They don't give a fuck about nobody. They just don't give a fuck. And I'm tired of giving a fuck. I'm tired of trying to walk this supernatural path and be this good, upright citizen. Fuck that shit. I'm tired of that shit. I want to give a, not give a fuck like everybody else. Because this shit is painful. What we have to go through just to live a fucking life is just too much. It's too much. I could die today and wouldn't give a fuck. Because guess what? I won't be here for this bullshit. I won't be here for this bullshit. I won't be here for this bullshit. Everybody mourning over people that's dead. No, they in a better place. Keep fighting to be here in this raggedy ass fucking earth. Fuck this goddamn life. And you know what? I'm not changing shit about me until I get my goddamn kids back. I'm always be this way. All that comedy funny shit, y'all can flush that shit down the toilet. Kiss my ass. I've been up here three years laughing, hee hee, ha ha, hoping this shit would get fucking better. And it don't. Fuck life and fuck that God. Don't get up here talking about some. Oh, give it to God. Kiss my ass. I had to come out here and breathe, bro. Seriously. I've been suffering like way longer than Jesus have. They say he died at 33. I'm 37 still fucking suffering. Somebody please explain. To and that's that, man. You know? Hey, man. You know, I, I, wish, I wish she wasn't catching hell, but, you know... You ain't no friend of ours if you reject the truth, you know? So I can't feel no sort of remorse for this woman. I'm sorry, I just can't, you know? <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to close out there. I hope you've been edified through this lesson, you know? Uh, you know, if you're still feeling any uh, sort of remorse for this woman and, you, and you're feeling like maybe I'm wrong, I advise you to watch through this lesson again and take, uh, you know, take special attention to the scriptures I brought out and uh you know hopefully you're edified all right and uh leave it there I'm gonna close it out give all honor praise and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakaq Kodash and Shalom Yasha Allah